A reckless life is not a life where somebody's parent dies. That's a tragedy, but it's not reckless. A reckless life is not a life where somebody has um, bad things happen or some issue that breaks their heart. That's life. What makes life reckless is when, I think, in my opinion, is when something terrible happens. A grandparent dies, a mother has breast cancer, parents get divorced, a teenager can't lose the weight, the GBA can't get higher, they're feeling lonely and empty, and in those moments <coughs> that something awful happens, the terrible blow, we call it, I call it the faithful ache. The faithful ache. When it arrives, life gets reckless when there's no one there to wrap their arms around you and say, I get it, I feel it, I'm with you. I can't change it. I can't fix it. I can't fill this void, but I can be here. And I can help. I can be a companion to the loneliness with you. Life gets reckless when you're not there. Life gets reckless for them when there's nobody to wrap their arms around them. And I mean literally arms. No wonder they hook up so much. It's not just hormones. It's not just that, that they're horny. And let me tell you, one of the youngest kids today raised his hand and he's the one who said, sometimes people have sex because they're horny. So it's not just that. It's because they want someone to touch them. They want to be held. And I said this earlier today, we play the game of tag. Whatever country you're from, everybody grows up playing the game of tag. And literally, as a child, what you're doing is running away from outstretched arms and you don't want to be the it kid. You never want to be it. Until you're a teenager. And then you play the game of tag all over again and you just wish that somebody was running after you and saying, you're it. I text you, I instant message you, I poke at you on Facebook, I see you. I'm drunk on you, I love you. You want to hear somebody saying tag, you're it, you're not alone. But when that doesn't happen, what they deserve is permission to have their grief. They can't have what they used to have, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the grades, the parents who are divorced, the grandparents who have died. The very least they can hold on to is the experience of sorrow. So they can learn and be transformed from what it's there 